Hi guys this is Hirasaki. This story is all about what if Naruto's biological mother was Kagaya Atsutsuki. After the war the village betrays him, only three people left close to him. The bijou resealed against their wills. In an attempt to bring the bijou back to him so he could save them he inadvertently reforms the jubi. After speaking to it he finds out who his real mother is. Kagaya Atsutsuki the woman he defeated in the war. Descendant of Amaterasu and the Shinju. Before we start kindly like and subscribe to this channel and look over the description box for the author of this amazing storyline. Welcome aboard. Chapter 16. Naruto frowned as Zoe woke him and Percy up. He had decided to stand guard in Percy's room near the door just in case anybody tried anything. Wake up Jackson a titan has come into camp to negotiate with us she said as Percy frowned and got up looking at Naruto. Do you want me to come as well? Naruto asked as Percy nodded. It would be best to have my general there he said with a smirk as Naruto nodded. Come on then Zoe said abruptly as they followed her. Did you wake anyone else up? Naruto asked as they walked out of the hotel. No, I figured everyone needed their rest Zoe said as Naruto nodded, thankful that she didn't wake anyone else. As they made their way towards Central Park Zoe frowned and looked over to Naruto. I'm sorry if I'm still a bit sour. I have been around Lady Artemis for many years and she has never affiliated with males and for her to have a male friend is still something to get used to she said as Naruto smiled at her. I under understand but I mean Artemis and the hunters Noel will he said as she slightly smiled and nodded. Naruto frowned as he got to Central Park. Prometheus, the titan of forethought, stood with a hyperborean giant and an impazai to his sides. Mm, I never would have expected the son of chaos to have horns, Prometheus said with a slight smirk. Yeah, mom likes to give me unique traits, Naruto said as his eyes shifted to the dojitsu and made the titan flinch a bit at their aura. Never mind that, I have come under the flag piece to talk, he said as he motioned to a picnic table and sits down at it. Percy looks to Naruto who nods as he sits down. Oh, son of Poseidon in charge? Here I thought that the son of chaos would take charge Prometheus said with a smirk. Well, it is his prophecy so it makes sense for him to lead though I am his general in a sense Naruto said as the titan nodded. Getting to the point, I believe it would be in your best interest to surrender. You demigods are going against titans, the gods are away facing Typhon and with the absence of Zeus they will lose as well he said as he stared at Percy. Where is the supposed king anyways? Is he hiding in Olympus? No, he is in the dungeon, Naruto said shocking the titan. Why is the king of gods in the dungeon? He asked amused. Well after he threatened my wife an unborn child I fought him, ripped his godly aura from him, reverting him to a human and I divided up the domains among the other gods, Naruto said as his eyes spun slowly, silently terrifying the titan. So, to put it simply we aren't surrendering. Naruto has a plan for Typhon and I have one for Kronos. We decline your offer Percy said as Prometheus frowned and slid a vase across the table. If you ever change your mind just open the pit hose the titan said with a smile. Inside there is Elpis the spirit of hope. Wait is- isn't the spirit of hope the last spirit in Pandora's box? Percy asked as he remembered Annabeth telling him that story many times. Yes, and if you ever find yourself wanting to give up then release Elpis the spirit of hope and I shall know he said as he stood up and left. Naruto frowned as Percy looked at the vase. Don't give up Percy, as my wife says hope survives best in the hearth. Percy nodded as he looked to Naruto. We need to wake everyone, I know an attack will be coming soon he said as Naruto nodded. You go. I have something to do he said as he looked to the moon. Percy got the idea as he walked off to alert the campers. Zoe stayed behind and frowned you are letting the primordial out? She asked as she had been told last night by Artemis of Naruto's plan and was ordered to defend him while he completed it. Yes, it is the god's only chance at defeating Typhon without Zeus's extra power or Poseidon's since he isn't battling either Naruto said as he sat down on the ground. Ready Gramps? He asked as he burst into his cloaked form. Of course, Naruto, I have established the connection to the moon and I plan to have myself drop onto Typhon himself. 
It shouldn't take too long to destroy that annoyance, just have to worry about collateral damage Shinju said as Naruto nodded. Good then let's get this done with, he said as he ran through the seals with the help of Shinju. Great sage art, moon's eye open. Descent of the beast. He yelled as the moon turned blood red and grew the markings of Shinju's eyes. In a great burst of speed, a large silver mass of chakra shot up into the sky and towards the moon. Zoe watched in awe as the moon opened up like a flower and a massive beast dropped from the moon. At first it looked like a human with a weird shell on its back, but then it started to change. It grew more animal-like and grew fur until it looked like a massive silver wolf with ten tails. Is that the primordial's true form? Zoe asked as she had never seen anything that felt so powerful before. Yes, Gramps' body was stuck in his incomplete form until his true soul returned to it so he was able to return his body to how it should be he said as he saw the body of his grandfather drop out of sight, though a loud boom could still be heard all the way from Manhattan. Battleground with Typhon Hera frowned as she blasted another bolt at the massive giant. Even with her wielding the master bolt, they could barely keep the giant held back. She was about to order a retreat after Dionysus was sent crashing into a mountain but her attention was distracted as the sky turned black and the moon glowed red. Artemis, what are you doing? Hera asked confused and a bit worried. I'm not doing anything. It's Naruto, he asked for permission to use the moon for something, he says he was sending help. She yelled back as they saw the moon open up and a massive wolf bore down on them and crashed into Typhon and sent him flying backwards. Once the beast was out the moon reverted back to its normal form and the sky became normal as well. Hera paled considerably as she instantly recognized who it was. Shinju the Shinto Primordial, what are you doing here? She asked, confused. She had no problem with the other pantheons she was just surprised that they were allowed in the realm. You can thank my grandson later he said as he turned to Typhon and charged up a toned down Bijudama since he didn't want to destroy the landscape too badly until he got him up into the air or somewhere that would cause less damage. He fired it off and sent the Titan back a large distance. Keep attacking him while I am his focus. I will slow him down with Mokotan until I am to a place where I can kill him safely he said as Hera nodded. You heard him. She yelled as she continued to launch bolts of lightning at the giant with her master bolt. Shinju smiled as he slammed his hands down as he sent chakra through the ground. And, since Kurama had human-like hands so will Shinju, would style, grand convergence of nature. He yelled as massive wooden textiles broke through the ground and wrapped around the giant's arms and hit him hard in the chest, getting him closer to an area where he could fire off a full bijudama and not cause too much trouble. Keep pushing him back. Shinju yelled as he tackled the giant and threw him away with the use of his tails as the wooden roots struck the giant as well. I can't kill him here without destroying too much. Get him to the ocean or some deserted area he ordered as the gods helped him willingly. Good luck Naruto, I have this front covered Shinju thought as he launched fireballs at the massive giant. Naruto. He panted as he felt drained from no longer having his grandfather stored inside him. He was thankful his grandfather chose to leave half of his immense reserves behind. Even at half the amount felt larger than all of the bijou did when he held them inside him separately. It really made him realize how screwed he would have been if Madara had full control of his grandfather during the fourth shinobi war. Are you okay Naruto? Zoe asked as she helped him up. Losing half of a near-infinite reserves is very draining but I am still more than able to fight and fire off my techniques with no worry he said as he dusted himself off. Come on we need to rejoin Percy, he's leading the campers back to Olympus he said as Zoe nodded. As Naruto rejoined the group he spun around as he heard an explosion behind them as he saw fire bursting from the ground and a set of golden armor that seemed to be worn by the man made of fire. He was muscular and, and tall with glowing skin, golden eyes like miniature suns. Along with the golden armor he had a golden sword strapped to his waist. Hyperion the titan of light, fire and power be careful Percy he said as he saw Percy charging at the titan as he summoned water around him. His body was still sore from releasing his grandfather otherwise he would be fighting with Percy. Get the injured campers into the building. 
I can at least keep any monsters back he said as Zoe nodded and with the help of the other hunters helped get them in. Dad! He heard Talia yell as she, Annabeth and Luke ran up to him. Was that who I thought it was? She asked as he nodded. That is your great-grandfather, I let him out to help the gods fight Typhon he said as he turned his attention back to Percy. Keep guard around the entrance to the Empire State Building and help hold back whatever Hyperion came with. Got it dad. She yelled after she hugged him and ran off. He smiled as they left and at how well Percy was fighting the Titan. Percy. He ducked under a slash as he ran his hands through the seals. Waterstyle, water dragon he yelled as he used his abilities to summon the water needed for it. Hyperion hissed in pain as the water dragon hit him hard in the chest. You are going to have to do better than that puny demigod. He yelled as Percy smiled and mist started to form around them. Brine style, vortex of erosion he said as a large vortex of water started to form around them. Hyperion fell to a knee as the water started to douse his flames and melt away his armor as well as causing gashes on him. How can a puny demigod like you bring me down? The titan yelled as he tried to ignite his flames again but couldn't get the tiniest of spark. I will defend Olympus from all enemies. My strength comes from protecting those precious to me. Percy yelled as he saw wooden tendrils coming from the ground. He looked over to Naruto who nodded at him and made him smile as the roots wrapped around the titan enti entirely until a large cherry blossom tree stood in the place where the titan used to stand. He quickly ended his taxing jutsu and looked to Naruto who gave him a thumbs up just as they hear the sound of a loud pig squeal. Naruto. Naruto groaned as he saw the Klasmonian Sal, a large pink pig with even brighter pink wings came flying through crashing into buildings. He turned to Talia as she nodded you summon an eagle and help Percy he said as he saw Percy immediately fly after it with Blackjack. She nodded as she ran through the seals, as did he, and slammed her hand down summoning jutsu. She yelled as a massive eagle appeared as a massive hawk appeared under Naruto. Follow the giant flying pig, not hard to miss he said patting the side of his hawk making the bird chuckle before the two massive birds took off. Naruto easily caught up to Percy as Talia shot lightning at the pig but all she could do was singe it a bit. Percy, you have a plan right? He asked as the son of Poseidon nodded. Yeah. Kill it. He yelled as he jumped from Blackjack and onto the back of it. The pig bucked as Percy landed on it before he was able to steer it into the ground near a bronze lion statue. Command sequence, Deadless 23, destroy the flying pig. Begin activation he said as the lion's eyes lit up and it roared as it jumped onto the pig. He quickly went around and activated some other automatons. Well delegating is a good skill to have Naruto said with a smirk as he landed down next to Percy, still on the back of his summon as Talia hovered above him. Guys the campers are being pushed back. Talia yelled as she held a walkie-talkie in her hand. Come on Percy, in warrior job is never done, he said as Percy nodded and quickly got back on Blackjack and flew back to their base. Naruto jumped from his hawk as they neared the battlefield and slammed down his hand, summing Jutsu, wolf contract. He yelled as a pack of nearly 50 wolves of varying sizes appeared around him. Kill monsters and save the kids. He yelled as they howled and ran off just as a horde of centaurs joined the fray. After the centaurs, the dubbed party ponies started decimating the monsters with the wolves helping as well the army retreated. Chiron good to see you here to help Naruto said as Chiron nodded at him. I can see you are doing a good job leading the group he said as Naruto chuckled. That is all Percy, I made him leader as we got here and he has done an amazing job, he said as Chiron looked shocked but nodded. Chiron turned to Percy and nodded we need to pull back and heal the injured campers, he said as Percy nodded and went to get Michael Yu to lead the infirmary. I'll send a clone to summon Katsuya to help as well Naruto said as he sent off a clone to help them at bay. Naruto stood out as he sighed, looking out into Manhattan. He knew the war was just beginning and he'd have to stay focused to make sure everyone survived the war for the most part. Percy. Percy sighed as he sat down on a couch in the lobby of the Empire State Building. Ever since this battle had started they barely had any chance to relax. You hanging in there perk? Luke asked as he groaned. 
I have been running around all day defending everywhere Percy said as he stretched, popping his bones and I haven't had any time to relax until now. Well, you have been doing a great job with keeping everyone safe for the most part he said as Percy nodded and sighed and laid back as he felt a familiar glass face that he was 100% sure he had locked away. Luke did you lock up the Pandora's pit hose? Percy asked as he stared at the vase in his hands. Luke, who was looking at the main entrance until now, nodded yeah I locked it up in the safe behind the lobby desk once you return with it he said as he turned to Percy and stared in confusion at the vase in his hand. It must be enchanted to return like Riptide Luke said as Percy frowned. Percy felt a strong urge to open the pit hose but focused all of his will not to open it. His mind recalled Naruto's words. As my wife always says hope survives best in the hearth. I need to head to Olympus, guard the entrance until I get back he said as Luke gave a salute with a smirk as Percy rushed to elevator and used the keycard to access the button that led him to Olympus. Once he got to Olympus he quickly went towards the hearth, to the only goddess present in Olympus at the current time. Hestia. Ah Percy nice to see you again. Is everything okay? She asked as he nodded, still holding on tightly to the pit hose. Do you know what this is? He asked as he held up the pit hose as he walked nearer to the heavily pregnant goddess so she didn't need to bother herself with getting up. Yes that is Pandora's pit hose, why do you have it? She asked a bit confused. Percy nodded as he explained how Prometheus gifted him the pit hose so that he would be able to surrender at any time and how it was becoming too tempting to open, even if they were edging back the Titan army. And you came here since you heard Naruto tell you that hope survives best in the hearth? She asked as Jigaku and Ryakan both helped her up as they had decided to be separated as to defend her easier. Yes, the temptation is too much and I will not risk accidentally opening it so I am here to offer it to you Lady Hestia, he said as he bowed and presented her the pit hose. Hestia smiled as the pit hose disappeared in a burst of flames as she pets Percy's head. Very wise of you Percy, she said as he stood up. Though I would suggest returning back to your group since I feel something big, she said as he frowned. Oh, and do tell my husband I am fine for now, my maidens are looking after me while he defends Olympus and I she said as Percy nodded. Once Percy left Calypso poked her head out from behind the sofa. Is he gone? She asked still a bit nervous to see Percy considering the fact he pro promised to save her even though Naruto did it instead. Yes, he is gone Calypso she said as the Tetanus helped her back to the sofa. I do wish my father would just let himself be defeated, the baby will be coming very soon and I'd rather not have it during war she said with a frown as she rubbed her belly. Naruto, while Percy was talking with Hestia. Naruto surveyed the city with his dojitsu since he didn't want anything sneaking up on them. The city was dead quite except for the sounds of the campers. Thought that was until he heard the familiar whirring of what he believed to be a helicopter. Focusing his eyes in as he got a clearer view and frowned as he saw the wild mess of red hair trying to get control of the helicopter that was spiraling out of control as the pilot fell asleep. Talia watch after the campers, there is something I need to take care of, he said as she nodded. Need any help dad? She asked as he shook his head. I can handle this, and you all need to save your energy for whatever is ahead, he said as two insect-like wings grew from his back. Good, my partial transformations are still there he thought as he lifted off the ground and darted towards the helicopter. He decided he wasn't going to go into cloaked mode just for flying when he could use Komi's wings for it, especially when he didn't know how long his cloaked mode could last without his grandfather in him anymore. He quickly buzzed towards the helicopter and quickly swept into the helicopter, somewhat scaring Rachel. Relax I have you, he said as he picked her up and quickly summoned a clone without seals to steady down the helicopter as he jumped out of the machine and glided down to the ground. Just how did you get here and why? He asked as he set down the shaken up red head. Rachel, Rachel took some shaky breaths as she sighed I had to come tell Percy something that is very important, she said as she stared at him with determination in her eyes. Naruto chuckled at her until he noticed something on her that confused her. She had a green aura around her that reminded him of the oracle back at camp yet very toned down. It's about Kronos and Ethan, he has to know it before he fights them, she said as Naruto nodded. Okay, then come on I can take you back, he said as he picked her up and summoned his wings again. 
The redhead blushed as she was carried by the elder father towards the Empire State Building. Naruto set her down when they reached the Empire State Building go inside he should be in the main lobby talking to the cabin counselors he said as she nodded and walked off just as a roar sounded out. Naruto groaned as he turned and saw a large draken flying towards them. Naruto instantly recognized it as the Lydian draken. He was getting tired of Kronos constantly sending his minions to them. Though he knew it was a smart act. It tired out your enemies and kept them busy though it could be risky considering everything Kronos sent at them they were able to defeat easily. Moments later Luke and Talia ran out where is Clarice or someone of Ares' cabin? He asked as Luke frowned. Clarice took Ares' cabin to patrol the borders he said with a frown. Damn I'll have to hold it back until she gets here. When she does give her a Horatian tag so she can come to me to kill it he said as Talia took the tag. We'll hold off any monsters that come as well, Percy is resting from having to battle so much as Annabeth and Rachel talk with him, she said as he nodded. Good, I'll hold it back as long as it needs, he said as he focused on Saiken. Beast transformation, six tails, he said as his body grew white and slimy as his eyes disappeared. His arms became shorted as he grew bigger and six tails came from him. Two stalks then appeared on top his large head as the transformation ended. Bring him everyone back from the city so no one gets hurt while I hold back the draken he said as his voice was mixed with Saiken's soft feminine voice as they nodded and rushed off. He quickly ran off towards the roaring draken. He slammed his tails into the draken as it hissed in pain and tumbled away. Wisdom Wolf Decay He yelled as he expelled a large cloud of acid at the draken making it writhe in pain as it started to slither away even faster. Even though the acid of Saiken's form would normally burn through anything and kill them near instantly but because he wasn't a child of Ares, he couldn't kill the thing only damage it severely and keep it from causing damage. He saw the draken trying to escape so he quickly wrapped his tails around the draken and solidified his slime to trap the draken in his slime as he felt the marker and quickly summoned Clarice to him. She looked around in confusion until she landed her eyes on him and brought up her spear. Clarice it is me Naruto, put down your weapon and kill the draken while it is still bound he said as Clarice looked still confused but looked to the draken and nodded. Though right as she brought up her spear to stab it in the eye the slime encasing it broke and it flailed hitting her away from it. Naruto quickly caught Clarice and set her atop his head hold on and when I get the chance I'm going to toss you at the draken to end it he said as she nodded and he ran after the quick retreating draken. Naruto quickly jumped over it, cutting it off and threw Clarice to the draken. He saw the draken rearing its head back to spit acid. Acting fast he gathered acid in his mouth so bubble, bubble dome. He yelled as he spat out a bubble to encase Clarice as she dropped down to it with her electric spear crackled with power. The acid hit the dome and rolled off as he released the jutsu just in time for her to stab it in the eye with a roar, killing it instantly. Good job Clarice, he said as he eased out of his beast transformation, we need to return to base though so hold on. Clarice quickly picked up her hide and grabbed onto the blonde hero's arm as they disappeared in a flash. Back with Talia and the rest of the campers. Talia frowned as she killed a hydra with her great-grandmother's black flames and returned her eye back to her original electric blue. She looked over as a flash burst in the park and saw her father in Clarice, who was brandishing the hide of the draken. The sight of the powerful draken's hide in the hands of Clarice seemed to strike fear in the other monsters as they quickly started to retreat. We need to regroup and build our defenses, Naruto said as Percy nodded. Percy, Naruto and Talia should head to Olympus to form the final defenses, Luke said as they nodded. This was the final descent of the war and Naruto knew it was about to hit the fan. Olympus As they entered Olympus Naruto quickly went to check on his wife. You guys can handle the defenses, right? I really need to check on my wife, he said as they nodded. Of course, go check on mom, Talia said as he smiled and kissed the top of her head. He quickly made his way to the hearth and let out a sigh of relief as he saw his wife safe still sitting next to Calypso, who was knitting something. Dear how is everything going? She asked as he sat next to her. Kronos is restless and has been sending monster after monster to us and we are getting some defenses set up here and I need to set up seals around here, he said as he summoned three clones to set up the barrier. That sounds tiring, she said as she held his hand with a slight frown. 
It is fine, since I do it to keep you safe, he said as he kissed her softly. How is the baby, he asked as he rubber her pregnant belly, making her smile warmly at them. They are safe, she said until she covered her mouth. Drat I meant to keep that secret, she said with a frown. They? As in two or more? He asked excited, as he placed his hand on her belly. Yes, I am having twins though I wanted to keep it a secret from you until I gave birth, she said as she held his hand. Can I know the sexes? He asked as she poked his nose with a smile. Nope, we have to keep that secret, she said as he pouted a bit until he kissed her. I have to go, summon me the second you go into labor, he said as she kissed him back and nodded. I have Calypso here to help and all my animals, she said the Tetanus smiled at him. No one will get in here, I have wards set up and with your seals it'll take a primordial to break in, she said as Naruto smiled at her. Thank you, Calypso, having you here eases my worries even more, he said as he kissed his wife's pregnant belly and stood up. This war will be over soon, I promise, he said as Hestia smiled. Please do, I don't want our babies born during the war, she said with a frown as he nodded and left. As he returned to Percy, he saw the boy sitting on Poseidon's throne, most likely talking with him. So, what did Rachel have to tell you? He asked as Percy got off the throne. She warned me to defeat Ethan before he started to glow Percy said a bit confused. Well, if she came all the way to do that then keep that in mind, he said as Percy nodded. Did you convince Poseidon to help? I think, that or I pissed off my dad a bit. Hopefully not since I really like being able to be in water, Percy said as he rubbed the back of his head sheepishly. He'll be fine. Did you guys set everything up? Naruto asked as Talia nodded. We set up the tags everywhere and your markers as well she said as he nodded and Annabeth burst into the throne room. Guys Kr Kronos is leading his entire army to us she said as Naruto smiled, confusing the others. Well good thing reinforcements have arrived he said as they went down back to Manhattan. Manhattan. Almost all the demigods were in shock as Hades, Demeter and Persephone all rode into Manhattan with a massive army of undead soldiers behind them. Took you long enough Hades Naruto said with a smirk as the death god smiled at him. Well, when Cronus's forces were piling out of Tartarus and trying to get control of the underworld it slowed me down a bit but with the help of Styx and Pallas I was able to leave without worrying he said as Nico and Bianca ran up to their father, who hugged them. I am glad you two are safe Hades said as they smiled. I have made sure they don't fight yet and just focus on summoning the undead. Plus, Nico's little girlfriend is helpful as well Naruto said as Nico and Allison blushed dark red. Enough teasing my son, we have a war to win Hades said making Nico pout. You all focus on Olympus, we can take care of the army he said as Naruto, Percy, Talia, Luke and Annabeth nodded. As Naruto was rushing off with the others, he felt the barrier surrounding Manhattan shirk as it tried to cut them off from entering Olympus. Acting fast, he grabbed a hold of all of them and warped into Olympus. Olympus. Naruto groaned as they landed in Olympus. He still wasn't used to warping groups of people, but he was glad her could do it. We need to hurry, I can feel Kronos in the throne room, he said as they nodded and rushed off. Just as they were going in a statue of Hera fell over and crashed onto Annabeth. Go ahead, I can save her and regroup, Naruto said as they nodded. Talia looked like she didn't want to go, but once Annabeth nodded, giving her a smile, Talia followed them. It'll be okay Annabeth, nothing is broken, he said as she nodded. He chose to stay behind to let Percy do his thing and to get himself ready for whatever awaited him. Throne Room As they entered the throne room, they saw Ethan with his Stygian iron, celestial bronze and mortal steel sword and black armor standing in the center of it. Do you all really think you can defeat me? I am a titan and you all are mere demigods. Ethan said as Kronos's voice came from him instead. A god, or a titan in your case, can still fall to a dagger, Percy said as mist started to form around him. Well, we'll just have to see that Ethan said as he waved his hand sending them crashing backwards, but to his surprise Luke crumbled into dirt, Talia evaporated in the wind and Percy faded into mist. Going to have to do better than that. Percy yelled as he finished the seals, mist style, 
Crashing wisps, he yelled as large wisps of mist crashed into Ethan and sent him crashing back into one of the many pillars of the throne room. Activate the barrier. Percy ordered as Talia nodded and formed the tiger hand sign. Kai. She yelled as a golden barrier formed around Percy and Kronos, keeping them in there and keeping Kronos from destroying the thrones, essentially weakening the gods. Miss style, instinctive defense he said as the mist around him started to shift. Naruto had created this jutsu for him from inspiration of his friend's Gara automatic defense. It was draining but at the time he needed something to defend him when he was too slow. Not a smart move demigod, trapping yourself in here with me Ethan said as he drew his sword and it transformed into a large golden scythe. Percy knew what it was and knew how dangerous it was, especially since it was deadly even in its unfinished state like how he saw in into St. Helens. Percy barely had time to react as Ethan appeared in front of him and brought down his scythe. He thanked his lucky stars that his mist defended him and gave him time to draw Riptide. Acting fast he lunged at the titan, titan but watched in shock as his sword bounced off Ethan's exposed arm. Tough luck Jackson, I readied myself for this Ethan said as Percy struggled to parry the scythe though the mist helped a lot. Percy's mind ran through what was happening. Thankfully his time of having lessons with Annabeth paid off as he realized that Ethan had the curse of Achilles and he knew a way to defeat Ethan even with the invulnerability. He quickly sheathed Riptide and started running through the seals as his mist struggled to block the blows of the Titan of Time. Brine release, coating of acid he said as he drew Riptide and a coat of green water coated the sword. Percy ducked under a slice from the scythe as he stabbed at Ethan's gap in the armor and smiled as the acidic water spread over Ethan. I am invulnerable Jackson nice try though Ethan said before he fell to an E. W what did you do? He asked as he started to cough up some blood. I sent acid water to cover your entire body below your neck and made it burn you everywhere, including your Achilles spot he said as he looked down at Ethan as he saw Ethan getting paler. No. I will not be killed by some puny demigod. Ethan yelled as his golden eyes started to glow and soon Percy couldn't look at Ethan. Relax Percy, I have it now, Percy heard Naruto say as he was warped away. Percy looked up to see himself on the other side of the barrier as Naruto stood in front of Ethan, who was on the ground and a black-haired man that was wearing an orange toga and wielding Kronos' scythe, his eyes were closed as well. This is what Rachel meant Annabeth said as she leaned against Talia. What do you mean? Percy asked confused until the man opened his eyes to reveal them to be pure gold. He's Kronos Percy, the real one, not the one that was trapped inside Ethan, his real body reformed and he used the release of Ethan's life to form it, Talia said as she stared worried at her father. Talia get everyone, everyone on Olympus to Hestia's hearth, it is set to guard against dangers, he said as she nodded and helped Annabeth up. Be careful dad, she said as he nodded, not looking back at her as he was focusing on Kronos. Of course, Talia, protect your mother, he said as they rushed off. So, this is your real body Kronos? He asked as he activated his eyes and burst into his cloaked form. Yes, the death of the weak Ethan let my pieces fuse together. Seems he isn't as useless as I thought he said as he inspected his new body. Well enjoy it while you can, it won't be together for much longer Naruto said as Kronos laughed at him. Olympus is doomed, Typhon is pushing the gods back and I am a titan lord. He yelled with a massive grin. Naruto chuckled as he looked to the titan have you even checked on Typhon's progress? Because I can assure you, he isn't winning he said, confusing Kronos as he waved a hand and the image of Shinju shooting a cone variant Bijudama at Typhon as he was restrained in the water by Poseidon came into view. Kronos stared in shock and a bit fear as the primordial felt Kronos looking and grew a massive smile that made Kronos wave his hand through it with a yell. I am still a titan lord. You are a demigod. He yelled as Naruto smiled. Well, we'll see about that, he said as his eyes spun. The final fight had begun. Chapter 17 Naruto narrowed his eyes as he parried Kronos' strikes. The Titan of Time was skilled and thankfully the blessing of his grandparents prevented the Titan from affecting him with his control of time. For a demigod you put up an actual fight Kronos said as Naruto pushed him back with the katana that radiated light. Shouldn't you be say saying demi-primordial? 
He asked as he sent blades of energy at the Titan for him to dodge them easily since they could be affected with his powers over time. No, I know what you are a young child of Shinto, I felt it the moment I laid eyes on you. You give off the aura of them clear as day he said as Naruto shrugged his shoulders. So, you know, doesn't matter, I will still kick your ass. Naruto yelled as he attacks in a fury, pushing Kronos back. I will not let you rule and endanger my wife, my daughter or my coming children he said as Kronos started laughing. It took my son and all the gods to take me and my army down, I will admit you all are giving me a run for my money but if I were to get serious you would be finished in a heartbeat Kronos said as his aura grew more golden. So, kiss your family goodbye because once I defeat you, I am going to chain you up and make you watch me kill them he said as he started attacking with more power. Naruto's felt a fire burn in him as Kronos's words hit him, he parried the strikes from the titan with no trouble as his eyes spun at such a speed the tomos couldn't be seen and only the rings could as they glowed with a dark red aura. You will die. He yelled as a powerful shockwave knocked back Kronos. Susano, avatar of Azura. He yelled as his Susano formed around him. It was a massive silver six-armed, three-faced being. It was covered in shogun armor as Naruto stood in the center of it. Kronos paled a bit at the massive size of it until it started to shrink until it encased Naruto perfectly as if it was just a set of armor and not an ethereal battle avatar. Kronos chuckled at it. You ditch your hulking monster to make it smaller and weaker. You are a fool. Kronos yelled as he dashed at Naruto with his scythe only for one of the hands to grab it mid-strike, hit him in the chest and send him flying, back through many columns. I condensed condensed it, Naruto said as he walked towards the fallen titan as he drew ten no kor wahano in his left hand and Yamato in his right as astral swords appeared in the hands of his other arms. I made every inch more powerful, also looks are always deceiving he said as he vanished from sight and appeared above Kronos with all six swords raised. Kronos had no time to react as the swords cut through him at rapid speeds before they pinned him to the ground as he let out screams of pain. Naruto left him pinned to the ground as he picked up the scythe and stabbed it into Kronos's chest, making him scream louder. First mistake, attacking Olympus, second mistake, challenging me, third and final mistake, threatening my family, he said, as his eyes slowed down but the Susano stayed active. I'll reform. And next time I will kill you. Kronos yelled as he writhed on the ground, trying to get free. Not if I have anything to say about it, Naruto said as he placed his hand on the titan's head. Like father like son, or in this case other way around, he said, as his eyes glowed purple. Human path he said as he pulled out Kronos's dark golden titanly aura that turned into a golden orb with a crown, clock, skull, and a stalk of wheat flowing around inside it. Kronos gasped as if the wind was knocked out of him as his blood turned from gold to red and his eyes became amber instead of pure gold. You will die a human Kronos, never to revive, never to reform and without power. May you suffer in the afterlife he said as he pulled out his blades and made two extra arms pull out the scythe as it glowed and turned into skull ring on his right middle finger. He looked at the orb in his hand and sealed it away as he lowered his Susano releasing a sigh until he felt numerous pulses from his marker as he knew what this meant since it was in a pattern, he had told Calypso and it only meant one thing. Hestia had went into labor. He summoned a clone to stay with the body of Kronos as he flashed to Hestia. 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 Hestia yelled in pain as another contraction started just as a flash rang out and she felt her husband's hand in hers. It's okay I'm here, he said as she smiled as she squeezed his hand harder as she felt another contraction. Is everything dealt with? She asked in between ragged breaths. He nodded as he kissed her hand the war is over, I can feel the gods back on Olympus he said as she smiled and let out a scream as he looked to Calypso, who nodded at him. It's time to push Lady Hestia she said as Hestia bit her lip and nodded as Naruto squeezed her hand reassuringly. Hestia squeezed his hand hard, not caring even when she felt the other gods warp into her hearth, she was just focused on giving birth to her twins. Hestia looked over as she felt another hand hold her in used hand as she turned to see her sister Hera holding her hand with a reassuring smile as Artemis crouched down next to Calypso to help her. Push aunt, you're doing great Artemis said as Hestia let out another scream as she felt the first one coming out. 
Artemis quickly cut the umbilical cord and handed the first baby to Calypso who smiled and looked at Naruto, it's a girl she said as Naruto grew a large smile, as did Talia. One more sister, keep going Hera said as Hestia screamed again as she started pushing again. Naruto kissed her hand softly as she smiled weakly at him and kept pushing. You are doing wonderfully dear, soon we will have two babies to raise and love, he said as she nodded and kept pushing. Nearly there aunt, keep going, Artemis urged on as the baby started to come out. Artemis, like with the first, cut the umbilical cord and with Calypso they both handed Hestia her two baby girls. They're so beautiful Hestia said in a weak voice as she nuzzled against the small babies in her arms. Naruto stared at them in awe as he felt his chest heat up as it dawned on him he was an actual father. He already knew what it felt to be a father with Talia but this was him truly being a father, and he loved the feeling as, as he looked at his two daughters from Hestia's side. The first one had fair skin and tufts of vibrant red hair on her head. It instantly reminded him of his mother's mortal form she took as Kushina. The second one had tannish skin and tufts of auburn hair. They both had a warm aura that reminded Naruto of Hestia. He smiled as he very gently pet their heads and let them clasp their tiny fingers around on of his. They're gorgeous he said as Hestia smiled at him. They quite are Hestia said in her exhausted voice, making him smile and kiss her softly. What about names? She asked as he smiled. Can we name the red-haired one Naomi? He asked as she smiled and nodded. Of course, the other can be named Chloe she said as he kissed the twins on top of their heads. That sounds lovely, Naomi and Chloe Atsutsuki, we can talk more, but you need your rest dear, he said as she frowned a bit. Yes, you need to relax sister, Calypso can watch over them as can Naruto's clones, Hera said as Hestia shook her head. I want to sleep next to them, she said as Hera smiled and nodded, looking to Naruto who created a clone to carry Hestia off, who had been cleaned by Artemis, as Calypso took the twins in her arms. He gave Hestia one last kiss as she started drifting off to sleep as the clone carried her off to her temple's bed. He turned to the other gods and smiled as Poseidon patted him on the back with a smile. We are sorry to take you away from your new family but we need to talk about the outcome of the war Hera said with a frown as Naruto nodded. Was Kronos's body secured? He asked as Hades nodded. You reverted him to a human and killed him? Hades asked as Naruto nodded with a, a serious look on his face. He threatened my wife and children, you would have done the same, he said as Hades nodded. Enough of the somber topic, I believe it is time to reward our young heroes. Poseidon said with a smile as the others nodded and they flashed Naruto, Percy and the others away. Throne Room Naruto smiled as he saw a man standing in the middle of the throne room. He had silver hair that went down to the middle of his back. He was wearing a dull gray kimono with a black obi. His eyes were a clear giveaway as to who it was since the red eyes with six rings and nine tomo was something only one other person had in both eyes. Ah uh, Naruto, good to see you handled the titan and did I just feel my great-grandchildren being born? He asked with a large smile showing off his fangs. They were, two girls named Naomi and Chloe, they are beautiful he said as the man smiled and pat him on the back. So, this is your grandchild you were talking about Shinju? Hera asked as Shinju, who was in his human form nodded. Because of circumstances that are to be explained later but for now let's just say I adopted him he said as Hera looked confused but she trusted Naruto who gave her a smile and nod. The gods went to sit on their thrones and Hera smiled at the group of demigods that had all taken part in the Battle of Manhattan. One by one rewards were given out to those who played the biggest roles in the battle such as Annabeth, Luke, Talia, Percy, and Naruto. Annabeth was given the opportunity to help Athena be the architect to build a monument to honor the campers lost in the battle. Plus, the chance to help Athena design plans to rebuild the broken parts of Olympus. Luke was given the curing of his mother's mind by Hades, who removed the oracle's curse and Dionysus, who said he would check up on her and make sure her madness was fully gone. Talia, who didn't want much, was given access to her old powers that she had while she was the child of Zeus and some others that she would learn to control according to Hera. Percy was the next to step up. And, same as Canon, Hestia and Hades are on the council, amnesty for the gods and peaceful titans and all the pay attention to your kids part, 
I don't feel like stating something that is the same. Naruto was next as he walked up next as he stood in front of the council. Naruto, for defeating a titan lord, stopping his reign and ensuring that he never rises again definitely deserves a reward, Hera said with a smile. And like young Percy Jackson it can even be godhood, she said as he nodded. I am thankful for that, but first I need to ask one thing of you, he said as he unsealed the Shinju peach behind his back silently. Of course, as long as it isn't something large since you are becoming a god, Hera said as he shook his head. It isn't anything big, I just need you all to let me explain myself before you jump to conclusions, he said as Hades chuckled. Naruto, Zeus isn't on the council, we won't do that the god of the underworld said as some of the other gods and goddesses chuckled at it. Then first I should explain that I am not the child of chaos, he said, as everyone stared at him confused. I came from another world, the elemental nations, which is ruled by the Shinto religion. He said as Hera connected the dots, but chose to stay silent. My name is Naruto Atsutsuki, child of Kagaya Atsutsuki, grandchild of Amaterasu and Shinju. I was sent here with Chaos's blessing to help bring peace to this pantheon like I did with my home world after a madman controlled my mother and grandfather against their will he said as he brought forth the peach. And I hope you still trust me after this he said as he bit the peach and was enveloped in a golden light. When the light, light died down his appearance had changed. His blonde hair had grown more golden and reached the middle of his back in a ponytail with the same spiky bangs that framed his face. His horns had changed from coming from his forehead to coming out of the top of his head, same horns as Kagaya now. He wore a white kimono with black magatama markings around the collar and nine on his back in three rows of three. On his feet were two wooden sandals as Yamato and ten no Korwahano were strapped to his waist. His eyes had become a darker sapphire blue with black concentric circles in his right eye and three tomos in his left though with the dark blue color of his eyes they could barely be seen. My name is Naruto Atsutsuki, Shinto primordial of peace, balance, energy and beasts he said as the gods and goddesses that did not know stared at him in shock. Hera only smiled at him I do not mind of you being Shinto relations Naruto, you have done so much for our world, saving us from the rule of a tyrannical king and an ancient titan. I still have no doubt in my mind that you should be a god of our pantheon as well she said as she stood from her throne. You would make me a Greek god even when I essentially lied from you? He asked as he stared at her with a raised eyebrow. She stepped down and walked towards him as she placed her hand on his shoulder. You have saved us from destruction, you could be a titan and I would still trust you, she said as he smiled. Do you still accept my offer? Naruto looked to his grandfather who nodded to him as Naruto smiled and looked to Hera I accept. Hera smiled as she used her powers as ruler of Olympus to instate Naruto as a god as the fates appeared behind them. Hmm, a deity of two different pantheons has never happened before Clotho said as she rose her hand. But we can see many great things coming from this, Lachesis said as she too rose her hand. We will come for your daughters when they both reach one year old for their domains. We wish you luck and look forward to your changes unfolding Atropus said as Naruto glowed gold again. All hail Na Naruto Atsutsuki, Greek god of nature, time, heroes and family, they said as they disappeared and the low faded. Only change to Naruto's looks were that his horns disappeared though there were still slight bumps where they used to be, meaning they could appear again. His hair also had thin streaks of bronze and his kimono now was dark blue with the Magatama markings still on it. In his hand was the golden orb of Kronos's domains and he noticed the crown and clock were gone from it. We have taken the domain of the titan ruler and given it to the one who deserves it, Naruto heard the fates speak in his head as he nodded his head. He watched as the skull flew off to Hades and the wheat went to Demeter. Hades gets evil because that is what he judges in the underworld and Demeter gets the harvest because of her already present domains, he said, as the orb dissipated in his hands. Now that the rewards are done let the celebration begin. Poseidon yelled as everyone cheered and was flashed away leaving only Naruto and Hera in the room. Today was been an exhausting day hasn't it? He said as Hera chuckled. Yes, but good things have come out of it such as your children and becoming a Shinto primordial and Olympian god, she said as he nodded. True, my two beautiful daughters, he said with a large smile. I was wanting to talk to you about something, she said as he nodded. Can we talk while we head to Hestia? 
I want to check up on her and the twins he asked as Hera smiled and nodded as they started walking towards Hestia's temple. Being that you are such a strong being and the fact that you are the god of heroes I wanted to know if you would mind watching over Camp Halfblood and possible be my advisor she asked nervously as she fidgeted the hem of her dress, a slight blush getting on her cheeks. Watching over Camp Half-Blood would be perfect and being your advisor sounds very fun, he said as she smiled and they reached Hestia's temple. I must go back to the party, I hope you can drop by after checking on Hestia, she said, she said as he nodded and smiled. I most likely will since I know my daughter Talia will want to dance with me, he said as she chuckled and walked off as he entered the temple. He smiled as he saw Hestia sleeping, curled up to the small babies that laid next to her as Calypso sat next to the bed watching over them all. How is she and the twins? He asked softly as Calypso smiled. Lady Hestia is immensely tired, the second she laid on the bed she passed out, she said as Naruto chuckled. So, tell me how did the reward ceremony go? She asked as Naruto started recalling all the rewards as well as his. Wow, Calypso said in shock of how powerful the man in front of her was you should go enjoy the party the animals, and I will watch over Hestia and the babies since they are in heavy guard, she said point to the animals that were standing guard all around them. Fine but if anything happens, I am but a stab away, he said pointing to the marker that was next to her as she nodded with a smile. He exited the temple, after going his wife a kiss on her forehead and made his way to the bustling celebration that was going on. He smiled brightly as he saw his daughter and Annabeth dancing in the center as Rachel and Percy danced as well. Luke was even dancing with Silena Beauregard, the child of Aphrodite. He knew the two of them had been flirting before the war, but he was glad to see the two of them so close since they seemed to be dancing to a slow song. Even Nico and Allison were dancing with smiles on their faces as they enjoyed themselves. Though they were being heavily watched by Bianca and strangely Hades as they danced. Naruto nodded to the gods and goddesses as he walked through the ballroom. He had to resist the urge to roll his eyes as numerous nymphs and sat satyrs that were following him because of his domains until he saw Hera standing alone near the drinks. Well, my new queen, will you this humble servant of yours the honor and join me in a dance? He asked as Hera smiled softly at him with a light chuckle. Are you sure Hestia will be okay with this? She asked as he nodded. She is sleeping from giving birth and I can't let my sister-in-law be alone during the party, he said as she smiled and nodded, enjoying the company of someone she could consider a close friend. As the party went on, he also danced with Talia, Annabeth, and Rachel before she had to leave for something he vaguely knew of. He was happy with how things turned out and he only hoped it continued to be as such as he got to raise his children. Dash four months later. Quite a lot had changed over the four months since the war with the Titans. There was an air of peace in the air around camp as he had become the new director of camp as did Hestia in a sense since she basically lived in camp with him, in the new big house that he had created with his Mokotan. Both Naomi and Chloe were absolute perfect babies, not crying too much and being absolute sweeties as the whole camp loved them. Though Talia had become heavily protective of her two sisters, watching over everyone who held them with her EMS fully active. With the two new baby goddesses more gods visited the camp like Artemis, Demeter, or even Poseidon, which was allowed since Hera had abolished the no visiting your children rule as long as the god or goddess did not train them or try and make them go down a certain path. His own side of the family had even visited from time to time since chaos allowed them. He had to keep his grandmother from hugging the two girls, much to her disappointment. His mother was very proud of him for doing so much and becoming not only a Greek god but a Shinto primordial. Hera had changed and improved the Greeks so much in the short time she took rule and with Naruto by her side it was even more so. Though with all the meetings Naruto had to bring in another person to watch his children, someone he trusted and had blessed as his first follower of sorts. He turned and smiled at the woman. She had olive-toned skin with long black hair with blue eyes as she wore a green toga-like dress as she held Chloe in her arms as Calypso held Naomi in her arms. I am so sorry that it took so long, how were the girls Medusa? He asked as the used-to-be monster, now immortal woman smiled as she nuzzled against the happy baby that was making gurgling noises to prove it. Around two months or so after the battle he had tracked her down and offered her the position, telling her of his situation and how his blessing would give her full protection and some other powers that she would use to protect his daughters. 
Thankfully for him she accepted and the twins instantly loved her. They were absolute darlings as they always are Medusa said as Chloe patted her cheeks with a large smile. I'm so glad my darling girls were so well behaved he said with a massive smile as he scooped up his two daughters and swayed with them making them both giggle uncontrollably as Hestia walked into the big house. He is such a great father wouldn't you say Lady Hestia? Calypso said as Medusa nodded alone. I never doubted that fact, the way he cared for Talia like she was his own she said as she walked up to her husband as he continued to make the two girls giggle. They need their dinner, you can continue to love on them after she said as he smiled and handed them to her. It's okay, they probably need to sleep after and I need to check on Talia to see how her training has been he said as he kissed his two daughters softly on their heads and his wife deeply on the lips. Hestia smiled as her husband left to check on their first real child. Hestia ca Cabin Talia smiled as she snuggled up with Annabeth as they kissed each other softly. Ever since her father had become the director of camp her life had been great. She was officially a child of her father since he claimed her in both pantheons, which gave her absolute control over her Sharingan, meaning no more massive drain and the unlocking of all its powers. She still had to train with them but it was less painful to do and easier to do so as well. She was supposed to be training but she wanted to be with her girlfriend more right now. Talia traced kisses down Annabeth's neck making the girl smile happy and moan lightly as she held Talia close to her. I love you Talia she said as her black-haired girlfriend smiled at her and kissed her deeply. I love you too Annie she said as they snuggled closer to each other. Naruto Naruto smiled as he overheard their conversation and decided to leave them be for since the life of a demigod was dangerous and he felt he needed to let them have their time alone. He was brought out of his thoughts as a voice belonging to a familiar redhead rang out Naru. What's up? Rachel yelled as she jumped onto his back. He rolled his eyes at the camp's new oracle. It turned out that Rachel was the ideal and perfect host for the oracle and had accepted the role shortly after the celebration. She now lived in the new incredibly large attic, which he had decorated to her liking so whenever she was at camp, she had a place to stay. She even helped watch over the twins occasionally. Just thinking about the way things are going in camp he said as he walked through camp with Rachel still on his back. Hoping it stays this peaceful? She asked as he nodded. Yes, but even when this peace ends, I will be here to stop whatever is coming with the help of my precious people since there is no chance in the underworld that I am letting my family get hurt he said as he stared at the falling sun. He could on only hope it would last a while longer. Chapter 18 Naruto POV Naruto smiled as he fed his six-month-old daughters some pureed food as he sat in the big house, which he made bigger to accommodate the new family and the horde of animals that stood guard nearly all day and absolutely loved the twins. They even installed a large pool in the back for Shimizu to be able to play with the twins by splashing and doing tricks, which they loved. But right now, the two small girls were being a bit messy. Naomi, Chloe please stop being so messy for Papa he said as the twins smiled and splashed their hands in their food. They are always like this ever since they have gotten old enough to eat mashed food Calypso said as she tried to wipe the twins hands as they squealed and giggled. Most likely they miss Hestia. Also, the fact they act hyper and excited whenever the both of you aren't here together adds to it Medusa said as she wiped their mouths and cheeks. She is busy with an Olympian meeting so they need to be nice for Papa he said as he pet their heads making them smile and hold onto his hands. You weren't needed today? Medusa asked as she knew how Naruto was Hera's advisor and often was called into meetings to offer his level-headed side of things. Not today, nothing important was being discussed so Hera let me be with my girls he said as he kissed their cheeks making them giggle more. Well once they are done, I'll heat up some bottles for them before bed he said as the two handmaidens nodded and started helping clean things up, with some clones of Naruto, as the original picked up the twins and spun around making them squeal. Let's get you messy girls changed and ready for bed he said he kissed the tops of their heads. Olympus. Hera POV. Hera sighed as the council meeting. Not out of annoyance or exhaustion from from the meeting more from some waves of emotions that have been swirling inside her since about halfway through the war, when Naruto saved her and defeated Zeus. She knew he was married to Hestia and they had two twin girls but no matter how hard she tried, 
she couldn't get her feelings for the blonde to go away. Every time he smiled or laughed in a meeting, she had to focus heavily on hiding her blush. And the fact she was single and he was married made things many times worse. She was brought out of her thoughts as Poseidon got her attention. Hera, do you have anything else to bring up? He asked. She shook her head and smiled yes, I thank you all for another peaceful meeting. We can adjourn she said as the council nodded and flashed away except for Hestia. Hestia was frowning as she walked up to her sister is something wrong? She asked as Hera sighed. She was nervous, afraid even, that if she told Hestia the feelings she was harboring for her husband then her relationship with her would be ruined. No sister, just tired from the recent happenings. I'll be fine. You go back to your daughters and relax she said as Hestia looked confused but nodded and walked away. She sighed and clenched her hands. She needed to get some control over her feelings or possibly get rid of them. Things were hectic with Hera's emotions to say the least. Next day. Naruto POV. Naruto smiled as Talia carried the twins through camp so she could spend more time with them. Come on you two, let's go find Annie, she said as Naruto chuckled as Shirzen and Mamoru followed her. It's great that she has taken being an older sister so well, Hestia said as she sat next to him with a smile. She currently wore soft blue jeans with sandals and a long sleeve cinnamon colored shirt with a soft bronze necklace that had her and her husband's symbol on a small circle of jade, hers on one side and his on the other. It was a matching necklace they both had. His always had her symbol showing and her hers had his symbol showing. She uses to have a younger brother but he disappeared he said as other campers started following Talia to play with the twins and chuckled once he saw her get overprotective of them. Well, she still has the natural instinct to protect them and love them, she said as he kissed her cheek. Talia POV. No Drew you will not play dress up with my sisters. Talia yelled as she narrowed her eyes at the daughter of Aphrodite. Come on, it's just a cute little outfit and it'll look perfect on them, she said as Talia merely glared more and summoned her Sharingan. No. I will not let you make them all girly when they are just six months old. She growled as the daughter of Aphrodite rose her hands in surrender. Stop being so protective Talia, the girls love the attention and we both know no one in Aphrodite cabin would dare put makeup on them since Naruto would get furious a familiar voice said as she turned to see Luke sitting on a tree branch. Why are you taking her side? Is it because you are dating Silena? She asked as she glared up at him and the twins squealed, trying to reach their hands up to him. Luke chuckled at the twins as he got off the branch and let them grab his fingers I am just saying that Naruto loves seeing them in cute outfits. Remember the fox and rabbit onesies he put them in a few weeks ago? Yeah, but Aphrodite cabin always goes overboard plus the girls don't like how their cabin smells Talia grumbled out as she frowned. We aired out the perfume and made it so if campers want to do it, they have to do it outside Silena said as she walked through the crowd and gave Luke a kiss on the cheek. Talk to Naruto about it, I need to find Annie, Talia said as she walked away with the help of Mamoru and Shirzen. Such a shame, I wanted to play with the twins today, Silena said with a pout. Don't worry Naruto, let's me spend time with them tomorrow, Luke said as Silena and the Aphrodite cabin cheered. Spending time with the twins was something everyone at camp absolutely loved and the fact the twins loved everybody only made it better. From Ari's cabin, who denied liking spending time with them, though everyone saw how much Clarice liked it, to Hades' cabin, with Melano cabin, who were a bit worried the twins would be afraid, but they loved it when Allison made ghost rabbits and birds fly around them or when Nico and Bianca played with them. All in all, the twins were the camp mascot and everyone got to spend time with them as long as the animals as well as Talia, Calypso or Medusa were there at keep watch. Talia grumbled as she walked over to Hestia cabin since Athena apparently wasn't too fond of having small children in her cabin. Probably something about possibly damaging books. There you are Talia, I was wondering if you forgot and went to Athena cabin instead Annabeth said as she leaned against the door. I didn't forget I just got held up by Aphrodite cabin and Luke she said as she kissed her girlfriend's cheek. The twins merely smiled as they reached for Annabeth who smiled and held them both in her arms. How are my two little sisters-in-law? She teased as Talia blushed dark red and the twins squealed as she bounced with them in her arms. 
Tea they'd be better if people didn't tease their sister, Talia stuttered as she blushed and grabbed Annabeth's hips making her squeak and jump a bit. Tea Talia not when I am holding the twins, she blushed as the twins looked at them confused. Well then I can wait, Talia said as she kissed Annabeth's neck before kissing the twins on their cheeks. Fine let's start their little lesson, Annabeth said as her blush died away. Over the last few weeks, the both of them were trying to help the twins with making more noises to help them develop. They also played with them a lot with toys and everything. Thankfully Hestia Cabin had diapers and wipes since they had them until lunch or, or so until Naruto wanted them back so he could feed them and lay them down for a nap. Talia smiled as she watched her girlfriend played with her sisters. Annabeth was amazing with the twins and the sisters-in-law made her start thinking of their future. She wanted to be with Annabeth forever and had often contemplated marriage but it always made her nervous. The fact that Athena didn't know of their situation is another reason for her nervousness as Athena wasn't the most understanding goddess at times. And the fact that Annabeth often teased about having kids of their own made her sad for the fact she couldn't provide that for her. Sure, Hera or Artemis could set up some special conception but she wasn't too sure about it. Talia, are you okay? Annabeth asked as the twins crawled over to their sister. I'm fine, just in thought. Come on girls, I think you're a bit hungry she said as the twins smiled as she picked them up. Annabeth knew something was on Talia's mind but she knew this wasn't the best time to talk about it since the twins were with them. Come and Annie, Talia said as Annabeth nodded, deciding to bring it up later when they were alone. Naruto POV Naruto smiled as he saw campers running around, enjoying themselves as things had been calm since the war ended. He often saw minor gods visiting camp and even a majority of the major ones as well. All they had to do was sign a sign-in sheet when they got there and when they left so he would know who all was there. The only god he had troubles with was Ares since he constantly wanted to train his kids but that would be against the new rule so the god of war settled for watching over their training and making comments since it was criticism and not training. He smiled as he saw Hermes flash next to him. Sup Naruto, I got some time off so I wanted to check on my kids and Luke. Is that okay? He asked as Naruto nodded. Just sign the sheet as usual. I think Luke is with Aphrodite Cabin hanging out with Silena, but I'm sure he'll spend time with you he said as Hermes smiled, signed the sheet and darted off to his children. Hermes and Apollo were the most common gods to see at camp. Aphrodite was next as she liked to teach her kids makeup tutorials and how to accessorize much to the girl's delight and male's dismay. She also caused a bit of trouble with her aura but he was able to suppress it so no demigods got lust crazy. Naruto always liked seeing gods and goddesses drop by to see their children, even the most strict gods and goddesses like Ares or even Athena at times. Sup Blondie who dropped by Rachel asked as she walked out of the house wearing a large t-shirt and shorts as her unruly red hair looked like a large mane or afro. Hermes doing his usual visit. Why were you hoping for someone else? He asked as she sighed. I want to talk to Apollo about this virgin business and if there were any ways around it, she said as she ran a blue brush roughly through her hair. Well I'm sure you can figure something out, he said as he patted her hair making her pout. Naruto looked at his clock as it was nearing time for lunch just as he saw Annabeth and Talia carrying Naomi and Chloe towards him. There are my four girls, he said, making Annabeth blush since she wasn't used to being considered a daughter to him. Were you good for your big sisters? He asked the twins as he picked them up from Talia. They were the perfect angels, they always are. Silena and Drew wanted to play dress up but I stopped them, Talia said as he chuckled. You know they can play with the twins as the animals would stop them from doing anything dangerous or harmful to them. Plus, the twins love playing dress up he said as he bounced a bit making them giggle. Come on it's time for lunch and they need a nap soon he said as he kissed their cheek, cheeks and the conch horn blew. Fine but if they do it, I'm watching over them Talia said as she followed her dad, dragging Annabeth along as the blonde girl chuckled at her girlfriend's antics. Dining Area Naruto sighed as he sat at the dining area with his wife and the twins. The twins were being great since both of them were there so that wasn't what he was sighing about. It was more because of the mixture of Athena Cabin, minus Annabeth, glaring heavily at Medusa, who ignored it completely and refused to acknowledge them, 
as they had been since she was hired in Aphrodite trying to fuss over the twins, but they didn't seem to like the goddess's aura. The twins were a bit hypersensitive to very odd things. They could handle Hades and Dionysus, but were odd around Ares and Aphrodite. He figured it had something to do with their possible empathy that they might have inherited from him, but until they were older he would have no clue. Aphrodite please go sit with your kids, the twins need to eat before they take a nap and you're making them fussy he said as the goddess of love pouted. They always do this with me. She whined as she crossed her arms. They never do this with Hades for chaos's sake. She complained as he pinched the bridge of his nose. Please just sit down, we can figure this out later but they need to eat he said as she walked away grumbling about Hades and unfair. It does seem weird that they act like this around her Hestia said as she fed them some baby food as they clapped and smiled for her. I would act like that too if Aphrodite kept trying to pinch my cheeks and make me all gussied up Medusa said as she crossed her arms. Maybe if she drew in her aura they'd be better? Calypso said as Naruto si sighed. Honestly I don't know but all I want is for them to be comfortable and if they aren't comfortable around her then she needs to do something he said as he played with the twins. Lunch went great, even though Hermes tried to start a food fight with Apollo but a stern scolding from Hestia stopped the two near instantly, which caused many demigods to laugh at them being scolded. He smiled as he saw the twins starting to fall asleep as Calypso and Medusa carefully picked them up from their high chairs. We can lay them down Medusa said as Hestia smiled and kissed the twins on their foreheads. Thank you, Medusa and Calypso. You two are always huge help she said as the two smiled and nodded before carefully taking the twins to the big house. Hey dad I was wondering if you could help me train with my Sharingan? Talia asked as she sat down next to him on his table. Sure thing Talia, I've been meaning to help you more but the twins have been taking up most my time sadly he said as he ruffled her hair. The last thing he wanted was for her to feel unimportant or not worth his time. I totally understand dad, the two of them are handfuls at time and thanks she said as she hugged him with a warm smile. We can start in a bit if you want I just have to grab a few scrolls from the big house he said as she smiled and nodded. At the usual clearing? She asked as he nodded. I'll be there shortly he said with a kiss on her forehead as she bound off to the clearing as Annabeth followed behind her. You really are a great father with making sure to still be here for Talia as well Hestia said as she held his hand. Well, I have to care for all my children, which means the twins and Talia. Even Annabeth since she is so close with Talia he said, kissing her hand. You go and spend time with Talia, tell her I love her as well she said as he nodded and went off to the big house as she tended to the hearth with a warm smile. Hestia. Hestia smiled down at her twins as she pet their heads as they slept softly. Naomi's red vibrant hair was coming through thickly and Chloe's auburn hair was following just behind her sister. Naomi's eyes were slowly becoming a vibrant purple as Chloe's were becoming an amber shade. To Hestia her daughters were becoming beautiful and were going to be gorgeous when they grew up. She might have to worry about gods going after them but if it got too much, she could have them swear on sticks the same way she did until she met Naruto. She loved being a mother and everything but the last week or so had been exhausting. All the meetings and the old enemies stirring as well as the discussion of the new prophecy of Seven it was all quite tiring. Hera didn't want to announce anything about the possible threat as she didn't want to cause panic until she was entirely sure and she understood the reason for that. She was a bit worried for the safety of the demigods but she knew whatever happened they would be strong and Naruto would stand behind them to help. She smiled as the two small twins grabbed a hold of her fingers as they slept. She wanted her children safe and she put all her faith in Naruto and knew that he would do everything he could to save them. Chapter 19 Naruto POV Naruto frowned as he walked down the steps into the dungeon of Olympus. Though it really wasn't a dungeon if it was only one prison with one prisoner. It was his monthly visit to check the seals and bindings that bound Zeus. He was entirely confident that his seals and chains would keep Zeus locked away but Hera often needed reassurance that he would stay locked up and away from her. And frankly he didn't mind being the one to calm her nerves. Ah so you're here again boy. And here it feels like you visited me only yesterday a gruff male's voice said as Naruto sighed and opened the cell to see Zeus sitting on the bed with a frown evident on his face. 
Ever since Zeus's removal from power his body had changed drastically. Gone was the large muscular and imposing god, as now he looked frail, weak and skinny. Naruto guessed that Zeus had used his godly powers to look imposing when in fact he never really trained or worked out. The only thing that stuck around was Zeus's beard, which only seemed to grow to fit his much older look as Zeus now looked around 70 or 80 years old even though Apollo assured them, he was essentially in his late 30s. It's the usual monthly checkup Zeus. Show me the shackles he said as Zeus groaned and rolled up the sleeves to his grey baggy long sleeve shirt to reveal two golden shackles that seemed a bit big on his wrists but were kept on him by his hands. Engraved all over the shackles were small, heavily detailed and insanely powerful seals that he had created with his crescent mark. They are on the same as they always have been, every attempt I make to bang on them I feel massive bolts through me and the damn things repair themselves Zeus said as Naruto nodded and summoned him his lunch. Naruto or the Olympians weren't cruel to the former god, even if he was a massive asshole to everyone else so they made sure he had a nice bed, food when he needed it, bathroom to use and anything else such as clothes and what not. Hera had various, trustworthy gods act as the usual guards to Zeus's cell though it wasn't really needed. If Zeus by some miraculous way got out of his cell the seals on his shackles would shock him with enough electricity to render anyone unconscious and then it would activate a warp seal that would send him back into his cell, only this time bound in golden chains until his cell was closed and refortified. Naruto didn't take any chances with Zeus since the man had a lot of knowledge of Olympus and absolutely no loyalties to them anymore since he hated Naruto and everyone else. How are those brats of yours Zeus grumbled as Naruto glared at him. him. Don't call my daughters brats or I can make these like shock collars that respond to a spike in my chakra to zap you, he said as Zeus scoffed. And if you must know they are great and everybody loves them. Whatever, just get this finished so I can get back to sulking, Zeus said as Naruto rolled his eyes. I still don't understand why you did everything you did. Attacking your own wife and my wife just because you didn't like me, Naruto said as he finished looking over the seals. Your paranoia has always been your fatal flaw. Shut up. You aren't even Greek. I had every right to be suspicious of you. He yelled as Naruto shook his head. I may not be Greek but I was here with permission of chaos. Your essential god and creator of everything. If I was bad, do you really think she would have let me come here? Naruto yelled back as Zeus grew silent. Whatever it doesn't matter, you got your punishment for your idiotic actions. I need to get back to camp he said as Zeus grunted as he left. Camp. Luke POV. Luke smiled as he watched the twins crawl around Aphrodite cabin as Naomi wore a wolf onsie and Chloe wore a rabbit onsie as the campers of Aphrodite's cabin were taking pictures and squealing over the twins' cuteness. The twins were currently crawling after a shrunken version of Mamoru the wolf that was essentially the wolf in puppy form. The animals often were seen around the twins in their younger forms so they could play with them and not have to worry about hurting them. They were able to do so apparently due to Naruto's full blessing of time. Naruto had given to Leah, Annabeth, Percy and himself all his blessings. For the most part it made their chakra more potent and even given to Leah an easier time going into her sage mode and complete control, control over her Sharingan. It also was told to make them age slower than normal or even stop aging altogether but only once he activated it on them. Come on girls we need to get them changed into their swimsuits Luke said as a collective whine sounded out from the cabin. You all know that Naruto wants them getting used to the water and it could help them build their leg muscles up for them to walk in time Luke said as they grumbled but picked them up so they could change them. Just imagine how they will look in little one-piece swimsuits with little ruffles and everything Silena said as a spark got in the eyes of the campers before they started working. See, that's how you motivate Aphrodite cabin, Silena said as she kissed his cheek. Well that definitely works Luke said as he wrapped his arms around her waist and smiled at the twins as they giggled while being changed. These little girls are going to be such heartbreakers when they get older, Drew said as Luke rolled his eyes. You do know that Artemis is getting to have them join the hunters and might even get them to take a vow of chastity when they reach that age he said as Drew frowned. That's no fun, they need to experience love and some heartbreak Drew said as Luke scoffed but a smack on the arm from Silena silenced him. Luke still rolled his eyes at them. He personally took his role as uncle and godfather very seriously and was often protective of them. 
Not as bad as Talia, but enough that he always had them in view and was often the chaperone of the group that looked after them. The only reason Calypso or Medusa weren't with them was because Naruto gave them the day off to relax and take care of whatever stuff they needed to. Calypso was checking up on her island since she still had flowers and plants growing on it. Medusa on the other hand was looking for her two other sisters who she had heard rumors about being somewhere in California so Naruto let her have time to search. Come on, we can't keep them waiting for too long he said as Drew nodded and finished changing Chloe as Silena finished up Naomi. They both were wearing soft cream one-piece swimsuits with small little soft bronze tutus around their waist. Are you all in your swimsuits as well? Luke asked as he pointed to his gold trunks that had branch designs on them and he picked up the twins. Well, we still need to change, but you can always stick around to watch Silena said in a sultry whisper as Luke grew a blush as she started to pull up her shirt before he rushed out of the cabin with Mamoru right behind him. He is so fun to tease I swear Silena said as her cabin mates laughed before they started to get changed. Beach. Luke smiled as he bounced with the twins making them smile and giggle before he had to cover their eyes as gods and goddesses started flashing in. He wasn't affected by it since Naruto's blessing also seemed to protect him from the blinding light of the gods flashing into the area. He wasn't sure about a god or goddess's divine form but he didn't feel like testing the theory just yet. Ah uh, so I'm not late he heard Poseidon say as the light died down to reveal the god of the sea standing ankle deep in the water wearing an open Hawaiian shirt and bluish green trunks with his normal trident in hand. No, you are just in time brother Luke heard Hestia say as she walked down to the beach wearing a soft blue bikini top with a blue wrap around her waist as she smiled at him with the twins. Why don't you toe just look adorable Hestia said as she picked up the twins from Luke. Thank you Luke for looking after them while I had a meeting and Naruto had to check up on something. It is no worries, Hestia, I always love looking after them and I feel they like me as well he said as he let the twins squeeze his fingers as Hestia giggled. You know they love you Luke, you are their godfather after all Naruto said as he entered the beach before multiple flashes filled the beach until ba basically the entire Olympian council appeared at the beach in their swimsuits. The only two that seems to be missing were Athena and Ares. Athena was most likely missing because it was a beach party and that ensured that Poseidon would be there and Ares most likely choosing not to go because it was a party and not a battle of some sort. Ah it is always good to relax at times like these Hera said as she smiled at Naruto as more demigods started to arrive. And where better to relax and unwind than with your children Naruto said as he smiled and went over to Hestia who was easing the twins into the water with Poseidon. My little nieces already love the water, Poseidon said as he watched the twins splash around in the water as the water nymphs came up to tickle their feet making them giggle and smile even more. They love everything Poseidon, but yeah, they do like making messes and with the water they think they are, he said as Shimizu tried getting close to them, but they were in too shallow water. I want to take them in a bit deeper, but I just don't want to rush it, Hestia said, as Poseidon chuckled. They will be 100% safe in my domain sister, the water will keep them afloat and the nymphs and Shimizu will all keep them safe, he said as he turned to the nymphs and dolphin won't you all? He said as they nodded adamantly and Hestia smiled. You go and play in the water with the girls, I need to talk with Hera for a moment, he said as she kissed his cheek with a smile. Okay, love you, she said as he smiled warmly. Love you too he said as he watched Poseidon and Hestia slowly get deeper in the water as the twins smiled and pet Shimizu. Naruto smiled as he saw many demigods enjoying their parents' company. He even saw Annabeth and Talia splashing around in the water. He waved to them as he neared Hera, who sat in a lounge chair. Chair. Why aren't you enjoying the water? He asked as she looked nervously at him. Well ever since I married Zeus, he never really let me in the water, claiming that I would cheat on him or betray him if I did so she said with a frown. How was the check up on him? She asked as she rubbed her arms with a nervous look. The seals are as strong as ever and he is the same jerk as ever. And why not go in now, you are a single woman and your brother is allowing everyone into the water today for the party. Plus, even if it wasn't the party, he would still let you in he said as she smiled. W well I guess I can go in she said as she took off her shawl, revealing her dark blue bikini that had a lotus flower designs on them. Come on, it'll be fun he said as he grabbed her hand with a smile and led her into the ocean as he was unaware of the light blush on the goddess's cheeks.
She watched as he led her to Hestia and the twins as the two small girls looked at her with curiosity as they tried to get over to her. Oh, it looks like the twins want to see you Hestia said as Herod nervously accepted the small girls. This is your first time holding them isn't it Naruto said as Herod nodded as the twins patted her cheeks with smiles. Well, it seems they already love you Hestia said making Hera smile softly as the twins smiled and Hera eased into the water with her. Naruto smiled at Hera enjoying the twins as he felt someone jump onto his back. Sup dad, where's mom? Talia asked as he saw Annabeth come over as well. Talia was wearing a black bikini top with orange waves on it with dark orange shorts as Annabeth wore a gray bikini with darker gray vertical stripes on it. She is with Poseidon and Hera with the twins, she's helping them get used to the water he said as she sat in his shoulders with a smile. Hey you think you could use Gyuki to give us something to jump off of, Talia asked with a smirk. My forms are not playthings he said as she whined. Oh, c come on, everybody wants somewhere to dive from and there is nothing around she said as he sighed and stood up as she fell back into the water. Fine but only for a bit he said as she smiled and nodded as she went off to tell the others. I swear she still acts like a child at times he said as Annabeth chuckled. Yeah but it's one of her best features she said as she followed after Talia. Naruto smiled at them as he walked onto the water as Hestia turned to him. Is everything okay? She asked as he nodded and chuckled. Just the kids wanting to use my Gyuki form to jump off of, he said as she covered her mouth to hide a giggle. Have fun and be careful, she said as he kissed the twins as they smiled at him before he fell into the water. Does he often take his beast forms for the campers? Hera asked as Hestia nodded. Whether it is for training, lounging or messing around he gets along with the campers amazingly so they often like seeing the forms. The smaller campers like them too since they find them cute she said as she remembered the time, he took Matatabi's form in the winter to warm up the camp a bit. Naruto waved to the nymphs as he drifted to the bottom of the lake I hope you all don't mind this he said to the nymphs as he made an air bubble around his mouth. We do not mind Lord Naruto. We personally love your water forms one nymph said as he chuckled and slowly changed into his gyuki form. The campers and even some gods and goddesses watched as the eight-tailed bull octopus form of Naruto peeked its head out of the lake and its tentacle tentacles reached to the beach. Wow it's larger than I remember Hera said as the twins tried to reach over to it with massive smiles as they squealed. And it looks like the twins want to see their dad now. They often love crawling over his beast forms. Their favorite would have to be Matatabi or Kurama Hestia said as with the help of Poseidon stood on top of the water with Hera. Naruto smiled as he helped them onto his snout as the twins crawled over to his eyes as he used his tentacles to take campers up for them to jump into the lake. Do you have them Naruto? I need to go and pick up Percy Poseidon said as Naruto nodded lightly so he didn't knock anyone off. Poseidon ruffled the twins hair before making sure Hestia covered their eyes before flashing away. It still is odd to see you in your beast forms, Hera said as she gingerly sat down as Hestia sat down. It's still him he is just in a different form, Hestia said as she watched the twins pat Naruto's snout as he chuckled. Um Hestia, can I talk with you about something in private? Hera asked as Hestia rose an eyebrow but nodded. Can you look after the twins? She asked as Naruto nodded softly again as he formed a normal clone inside the beast form as it kept it solid and he appeared next to the twins with a smile. I've got this, you two go talk, he said as he covered the twins' eyes as they flashed away. Naruto smiled as he picked up the twins, why don't we go visit some of the others and have some fun, he said as the twins smiled and pat his cheeks. Hestia and Hera Hestia smiled at her sister as they arrived at her hearth in Olympus as everyone was at the beach, even Athena's cabin begrudgingly after Annabeth made them come down. So, sister, what is it you need to talk to me? You seem worried about something she said as Hera fidgeted and sat next to her. Well for nearly a year, shortly after Zeus was dealt with, I started to fall for someone Hera said as Hestia smiled at her. Oh, I'm so glad for you. I was worried that you wouldn't find someone to love she said as Hera gained a worried look as she wrung her hands together. T that's the bad part. The person I love is someone who is already married and as the goddess of marriage I shouldn't be having these feelings Hera, Hera said as Hestia rubbed her back. Never be sorry for who you fall in love with. 
And if it is a god then I am sure his wife can settle something out with you Hestia said as Hera bit her lip. I it's Naruto she said as Hestia stared at her in shock. Naruto. Naruto smiled as he saw Hades holding Chloe as Persephone held Naomi. See they still love you. I don't know what your fear is of your nieces being afraid of you Hades he said as the good of death gave him a deadpan look. Naruto, I am the god of death and now evil, my own children are normally afraid of me so the fact that these two aren't affected surprises me greatly every time he said as Persephone chuckled. I think the twins can sense how you really are and not how others perceive you she said as Naruto nodded. I figure they have my negative emotion sensing that I got from my grandfather but they are affected by some auras such as Ares or Aphrodite and I figure that is because they aren't used to feeling love or anger all too much he said as Chloe bounced in Hades' arms. Naruto's attention was pulled away as he felt a spike of fear and worry coming from Olympus but was pulled away as he felt someone hug his arm. He looked over to see Rachel smiling at him. She was wearing a white bikini with paint splatter designs with jean shorts. Her red hair was pulled back in a ponytail as she stared at him. Come on blondie, you need to help me talk with Apollo about my situation and now is the best time. She said as she started pulling him away. We can look after the twins with Jigaku and Ryakin, you help young Rachel Persephone said as the two-headed hellhound nodded and let out a bark as Naruto nodded. Thanks. Thanks, you too he said as he let Rachel pull him away. Holding these two makes me want more kids, Persephone said as Hades grew a light blush as his wife moved closer to him. Dinner time. Naruto frowned as he didn't see Hestia or Hera anywhere as dinner started. He decided to cook homemade food for the campers and gods instead of the automatically created food. He had clones working the grill to make hamburgers, corn, potatoes and even tofu burgers for the vegetarians. His talk with Apollo was a bit exhausting but he got him to agree to let her be in a relationship as long as she stays a virgin, it was better than no relationships at all deal she and Apollo had originally. He smiled as he saw Poseidon talking and laughing with Percy as they sat at his table. It could just be the feeling he got from his family domain but it always made him smile to see the gods and goddesses spend time with their children. Artemis was even being there for Athena's kids as Aphrodite was being there for Ares's as the two of them were elsewhere. Artemis have you seen Hera or Hestia lately? He asked as the goddess of the hunt bounced with the twins before looking over at him. Not since they left the beach she said as she wore her usual outfit as she had changed out of her silver one-piece swimsuit. Did something happen? She asked as he shrugged his shoulders. I have no idea, one second they were sitting with me and then the next moment Hera said she needed to talk with Hestia alone and they have been gone since then he said as she nuzzled against the twins. They'll come back once they are ready and done talking Artemis said as the twins smiled at her. More importantly can I borrow these adorable girls for a couple days Artemis, Artemis whined as she held them close to her. Naruto chuckled as he rolled his eyes only if you stay at camp so they can still get fed and everything he said as she whined louder. Fine but I get to look after them for the whole day and Hestia will be the one to feed them since every time they see you they want to be near you she said as he nodded and she cheered. Ever since the twins were born Artemis was in love with them as in her eyes, they were the perfect girls, but to be fair everyone thought that. Artemis was gunning on making them hunters or eternal maidens like she was. Naruto kept having to tell her it would be the twins' decisions once they reached that age and he wasn't going to let anyone force them to make a decision. He turned away from Artemis as he felt another spike of emotions, only this time it was joy, gratefulness and even love and it came from Olympus again but right now, just like last time he was too busy to check it out though he had the strongest feeling it was about him. Hera and Hestia back before dinner. Hestia started at Hera in shock as her mind worked to go through what was just told to her by her sister. Why you love Naruto? Hestia said as Hera stared at the floor in fear. I've tried many times to get these feelings out of my head but I can't. He is the first man to ever treat me like a real person and not some dainty Queen Hera said as she refused to meet Hestia's eyes. I never planned to fall for him, it eats me away every time I see him or you or especially the twins she said as tears started to build up in the corners of her eyes. I haven't made any moves on my feelings as I would never do that to you, just please don't hate me she started babbling until she was silenced by Hestia hugging her and shushed her softly. Shoo sister, I would never hate you. 
As I said, never be sorry for who you fall in lo love with Hestia said as she rubbed Hera's back. I have known for a while, but I knew you had to gather the courage to tell me, she said as Hera looked at her in shock. You knew? She said as Hestia nodded. I have seen the way you look at him Hera, but I knew you would have to tell me yourself since I saw how you were coming to terms with it, she said as Hera looked at her. I don't want to ruin our relationship Hestia, we just recently fixed it and falling in love with your husband would have done that, Hera said as Hestia held her closer. Hera, I know how you don't throw around the word love since you have only loved one other person Hestia said as she held her sister's hand. If you truly love him then tell him, whatever he decides will be fine with me. We can both be with the man we love, I mean there has been weirder relationships Hestia said as Hera chuckled and wiped her tears. You are really okay with this? Hera asked nervously, as Hestia nodded. Hera you are my sister and I love you so much, and if this makes you happy then this can work, she said as she rubbed her sister's hand. Hera smiled as she hugged her sister, I love you too sister. I'll tell him first thing tomorrow, but first we should probably head back as I think he might be worrying about us, she said as Hestia nodded and flashed back to camp. Camp. Naruto smiled as he saw Hestia and Hera return, still in their bathing suits as it was only slightly after dinner and they had left earlier in the morning, shortly after lunch. There you two are, I was worried something happened to you, he said as he kissed Hestia on the cheek. Sorry, it was girl talk, she said with a smile. Where are the twins? They are being watched over by Artemis who begged to watch after them tomorrow so I let her as long as she stayed at camp he said as Hestia smiled. Perfect, you need to spend time with Hera tomorrow as she has an important topic to talk to you about and I approve of it, all that matters is your, your decision she said as she kissed him and went inside. Naruto looked to Hera in confusion as she nodded to him. I will see you tomorrow, I must return to Olympus. Today was fun she said as he nodded. See you tomorrow then he said as she flashed away. Naruto felt curious about the important topic and all the secrecy but figured he'd figure it out tomorrow. He shrugged his shoulders as he went back inside to the big house, he'd figure it all out tomorrow. Chapter 20 Naruto chuckled as he saw Artemis, with the help of Zoe, take the twins off to her cabin to look after them. Hestia followed them to help get them situated and everything. They both knew that Artemis could handle looking after the twins, but Hestia was just being the doting mother she was known to be and Artemis understood signs she knew how the new mother worried about her kids. He was free to relax for a bit until Hera called him with her marker so they could talk about whatever important decision she had to tell him about. He had tried to get some hints out of Hestia but all he got was I am okay with her decision and it all depends on you. He was confused so until Hera called him, he was relaxing alone since everyone else had things to do. Talia was off on a date with Annabeth in the city, Luke was with Silena most likely doing the same, Percy was back at home with his mom and Rachel was even in heavy debate with Apollo to negotiate her oracle terms since she, and he, personally believed that the virgin thing was useless but Apollo was surprisingly set in his old ways. He smiled as he summoned a glass of tea when he blinked as a flash filled the room. Oh, hello Demeter, here to visit your kids? He asked as the goddess of the harvest frowned and looked around. Yes, but, but I was also hoping to talk with Hestia about something, she said as Naruto frowned and summoned another cup of tea. Come sit down, I'm told from many people I am good at solving problems and helping, he said as she nodded and sat down. Well, you are my brother-in-law so as Hestia always says family can solve any worries, she said with a smile. Demeter took a sip of her tea and frowned while well, you know Persephone's ordeal with Hades and fall is coming soon, the mark of when she has to be locked up in the underworld, she said as he nodded. That is true, but from what I have seen between the two their relationship isn't as bad as it used to be he said, making Demeter frown. Now I'm not saying that kidnapping her is good, but compared to how Zeus and some other gods got their wives it's pretty tame, he said with a shiver. But she is forced to stay there. She said as she slammed her hand down. Yes, I know that but from what I have seen Hades didn't touch her until she grew comfortable with him, he made her feel welcomed in the underworld. Letting her plant gardens and mess with his temple. If anything, he is a caring husband to her and he even lets you visit he said as she frowned but nodded. If anything, sit her down and ask her about it. If she is happy with him then just continue visiting while she is there he said as she nodded. 
I just don't like having her not up here, she said as he nodded. Makes sense, having one's child away from them feels weird, but Hades is a good man, he isn't as bad as Zeus always made him seem, he said as Demeter nodded as she stood up. Well, I better be getting to the real reason I came here. Where's the sign in sheet? She asked as he pointed to the door to show a scroll that was partially unrolled to reveal lines to be written on. Right there and then you just go have fun until you have to leave, he said as she smiled and nodded. He was fond of Demeter, she was a kind woman and a sweet mother to her demigods and godly children. Plus, she was always fun to talk to. They often talk talked about his Mokutan and other abilities as she found the ability to control nature and harness it very interesting. Even Persephone was very nice to talk to as well since she shared her mother's plant-based domain. And he had already talked to her about her situation with Hades and she had told him she was actually happy with it. It seemed Hades was a real softing and sweetheart when they were alone and he was even like that when they first got married. He left her alone until she was comfortable to come out of her room and didn't lay one finger on her until she was okay with it. To Naruto it seemed Hades inherited Rhea's kindness towards others, even when you considered his domains. Naruto smiled as he saw Demeter's children run up to her with large smiles as she gave all of them hugs. It was always great to see the demigods with their godly parent. Hestia and Artemis. Now they can only eat mashed food and they tend to be messy eaters Hestia said as she wiped the twins' faces with a wet wipe. Yes, and they can only drink your milk Artemis said with a smile. Aunt relax I think I am capable enough to look after my little cousins. Hestia giggled as she nodded. I know but I just have to make sure. They are my darling girl she said as Artemis nodded. Go and relax with Naruto, you deserve it she said as Hestia chuckled. He has a very important meeting with Hera today so he will be gone most of the day probably so I am going to relax in my main hearth for a bit she said with a smile. Something important? Artemis asked as Hestia chuckled. Something very personal, that is all Hestia said as she smiled. Have fun with them and don't try and make them make any vows as they aren't even one year old Hestia said as she narrowed her eyes lightly making Artemis sweat in slight fear and nod quickly. That was only one time, I swear I won't do it again, Artemis mumbled as Hestia smiled and kissed the twins on their heads before leaving the cabin. Hera! Hera frowned, frowned as she paced her temple nervously. I, I have to do it today. I can't hold back any longer she thought as she took deep breaths and tried to calm her nerves. So, the feelings of love are coming from you, a feminine voice spoke out as Hera quickly turned around to see Aphrodite standing behind her with a smirk. Aphrodite. What are you doing in my temple? Hera asked as she narrowed her eyes at the love goddess. Well, I felt such strong love coming from someone on Olympus so I had to find out who it was coming from Aphrodite said as Hera continued to frown. My feelings are none of your concern Aphrodite as you already know you are not allowed to mess with the love lives of other gods and goddesses Hera said making the love goddess frown and pout. But this is you. The last person I would have thought to have these feelings since you have only loved Zeus and the love pales in comparison to this one. It's like comparing an ant to a god she said as Hera started to blush. So who is the lucky god to get your love? Does he already know? Aphrodite asked as Hera cleared her throat and shook away the blush. Neither of those things are your concern Hera said as Aphrodite pouted but let it drop since the glare Hera was giving her was getting scary. WL have fun then Aphrodite said as she quickly flashed away. Hera sighed as she made sure to build up her temple's defenses to hide her emotions from being sensed by others since she would be soon summoning Naruto here to confess to him. The thought of confessing to a married man felt wrong but she honestly couldn't deny that she loved him. And the fact that her sister was willing to allow it was even more touching. She nervously pulled out her marker and clutched it in her hands as she looked at the time. Artemis should be there already meaning Hestia is with her and Naruto is alone. It's now or never she thought as she stabbed the marker into her temple floor. Talia and Annabeth. Talia smiled happily as she looked her girlfriend. She had taken her through New York for most of the day. It was their first official date outside of camp and Talia was pulling out every stop. 
So far, they had been to nearly every museum around them and she could see the joy in Annabeth's eyes as she told her about every exhibit in the museum. Have you had fun today? Talia asked as they currently were sitting in an old-fashioned diner, snacking on french fries and sharing a milkshake as well. Even after she expressed how embarrassing, because of the cheesiness factor, it was to share one in public but she couldn't say no to Annabeth after she started begging for her to do it. It was amazing Talia, thank you so much for it Annabeth said as she leaned across the table and kissed her softly. Talia smiled as she returned the kiss. She may be embarrassed to do cheesy things like share milkshakes but she was never embarrassed to kiss the girl she loved. It's the least I can do. Though I am sad we can't leave New York Talia said with a frown. She didn't know what was going on but her father had told her to stay in New York because something was stirring and they weren't sure what exactly it was and that it was better safe than sorry. It is fine Talia, we don't have to leave New York to have a great date. As long as I am somewhere with you that is all that matters Annabeth said as she kissed Talia again with a smile. Talia's smile fell as she heard wolf whistles from behind them. Woo! Slip her some tongue. One man called out as Talia narrowed her eyes and was about to get up only for Annabeth to stop her. Don't let them ruin our date. Just ignore them she said as they kept calling out to them. Come one show some ski ah. Another man said with a scream as Talia turned around and smiled at the sight. Standing over the fallen two boys was her grandmother, the powerful rabbit goddess. She wore her usual kimono with a soft smile on her face. Grandma? What are you doing here? Talia asked as Annabeth nervously hid behind her. I came to visit your father but Hestia said he was in an important meeting so I came to visit my granddaughter before visiting the twins. I didn't know you two were on a date, I hope I'm not interrupting it Kagaya said as she hugged Talia and smiled at Annabeth. Don't worry, you actually helped get rid of an annoyance Talia said as Kagaya looked at Annabeth. Is this the girlfriend Naruto told me about? Kagaya asked as Talia nodded. Yup, this is Annabeth Chase, daughter of Athena and the girl I love Talia said as she squeezed Annabeth's hand. Annabeth nervously bowed until Kagaya stopped her. No need to bow Annabeth, I have never been one for it and you are family, you never need to bow to me, my mother or my father, Kagaya said as Annabeth smiled and nodded. It's nice to meet you Annabeth said as Kagaya smiled warmly at the two. Same to you. Enjoy your date, I'm off to go and see my little baby grandchildren Kagaya said as she kissed Talia and Annabeth on the top of their heads before flashing away. Good thing it wasn't great grandma, she would have crushed us in one of her deadly hugs Talia joked as Annabeth slowly recovered from meeting the powerful Shinto goddess. Is she always that welcoming? Annabeth asked as Talia nodded. Dad's family is always warm and welcoming. Must be a Shinto thing Talia said as she put down money for the bill. Come on, we still have more places to go. Annabeth smiled as she held her girlfriend's hand and nodded as she let her lead her off, back into New York. Naruto, Hara's Temple Naruto smiled as he arrived in Hara's temple as she had finally put down the marker to summon him. Hello Hara, how has your day been so far? Far. He asked as he walked into her main room. Hera squeaked as she jumped and turned around. I'm sorry, did I scare you? He asked with a chuckle as she frowned. I didn't know you would teleport here so soon after putting the marker down Hera said as she composed herself and smiled. Well, I had to split my essence, which always feels weird since it's not a clone or anything but really half of me. Plus, Hestia told me you had something important to tell me so I rushed over he said as she nodded nervously. D did she tell you what I was needing to tell you? She asked as he shook his head and sat down on one of her armchairs that sat opposite of her sofa. Nope, just said it was important and she was okay with it so it was all up to me, he said, confused as she nodded. Well it's about me and I I need advice on how to go about these feelings I have for someone she said as he stared at her before cracking a smile. So you need advice? Ah uh, you need my help getting his attention or something? Well as your advisor it is my job and I am glad you are falling for someone he said as he smiled at her. So who is the insanely lucky man to catch your eye? That's the difficult part. H.E. is married and it feels wrong to me she said as he frowned. 
Well, I'm sure he dash, he said until she interrupted him. But then I talked with his wife and she said it was okay as long as he said it was fine, she said as his eyes widened and she walked over to him. Naruto, I love you, Hara said as she kissed him softly. Naruto, camp. And, he split his essence in half so there are essentially two of him. He only does it when he needs to watch over something and having clones do it won't work. Naruto felt his cheeks heat up for whatever reason as he felt like something major had just happened to his other half. He knew he'd figure out what happened soon since his half he sent to Hara would return soon. Splitting his, his essence was still new and odd to him. It was like a clone but it didn't dispel, only merge back together with him and there was no memory feedback. Well, there wasn't memory feedback for anything anymore. After becoming a god and a primordial he had tested it out by making 1000 clones read every book in a massive library and then dispel only to find that the knowledge painlessly integrated itself in his head, not even the slightest headache. Though he would admit he liked clones better since dividing himself always felt weird. He blinked as a bright flash filled the room and brought a smile to his face once he saw who it was. Mom? What are you doing here? He asked as she smiled and hugged him tightly. I came to visit my grandbabies, I came by earlier and Hestia said you were in an important meeting with Hera, did you finish it? She asked confused as he shook his head. Nope, I'm actually doing it right now, half of my essence is over there while I watch over things here, he said as she nodded. Splitting your essence is very useful, it's a good ability the Greeks have compared to the Shinto, she said as she smiled at him. So where are the grandbabies and Hestia? She asked as he chuckled. Well Artemis is watching after them today so I'm sure she will let you say hi to them and Hestia is relaxing at her main hearth back in Olympus as a small break, he said, as his mother frowned. That hunter goddess better not try and make them one of her little hunters. I want great grandbaby she growled out as he chuckled. Don't worry Hestia warned her. Go and visit, you know how much they love you he said as his mother smiled happily. Yes, and I visited Talia and Annabeth, they are such an adorable couple she said as he chuckled. Yes, they truly are, I'm happy for them he said as his mother smiled. As am I, now I better go check up on them before the goddess tries anything she said as he nodded and she gave him a kiss on the forehead before walking off towards Artemis's cabin. This wasn't the first time his mother visited the camp. After the Titan War and the birth, birth of his daughter's chaos allowed his mother Kagaya and grandmother Amaterasu to visit camp whenever they wanted as long as they didn't get involved with the events of the world. Since then his mother made sure to visit at least three times a month and his grandmother, being the matriarch of the Shintos and a busy woman, she always visited at least once a month. His grandfather Shinju always came with her when she visited. The campers had been nervous around the two utterly powerful women at first, but after the first few visits they grew used to them. They had become role models for the female campers by being powerful women and leading an entire pantheon, just like Hera. Naruto let out a sigh as he heard arguing between his mother and Artemis already. His mother was insanely protective of his daughters to a point she was ready to put anybody who harmed them or made them sad in an infinite Tsukuyami. She almost did once when Aphrodite tried to set them up with someone in the future but thankfully his grandfather was there to help him calm her down. I really hope I don't have to break them apart, again he thought as he sighed in relief as he felt the oppressive aura disappear. Kagaya Artemis's cabin. They are my grandbabies. I am only going to see them for a bit before I have to go back to my realm so let me hold them Kagaya hissed out as she stood in the cabin of the hunter goddess, unaffected by the no entry without god slash goddess's permission rule as she was the mother of the director of the small camp as well as a very powerful Shinto goddess. Naruto is letting me look after them today and if you hold them, they won't want to come back to me. Artemis growled as Kagaya scoffed. It will only be a few hours, and I have seniority over you as I am their grandmother, she said as Artemis smirked. That's not the, the only thing you have seniority over, senior citizen, she muttered in a low tone only to start sweating as an oppressive aura filled her cabin. What was that? Did you call me old? Kagaya asked as her third eye opened her up and started spinning. Then twins, who didn't seem to be affected by any of what was going on between the two goddesses giggled as they looked up to Kagaya making grabbing motions showing they wanted to be picked up. 
See they want me to hold them Kagaya said, leaving Artemis as her scared stupor and picked the twins up as she held them close to her and kissed their cheeks. The twins giggled as they patted their grandmother's cheeks and tried to grab her horns. No no little ones, my horns are sharp and I would never want to hurt my precious little angels Kagaya said as she kissed their hands as they continued to pat her cheeks. Artemis grumbled as she pouted on her bed as her hunters watched the scene from the doorway connecting her room to the rest of the cabin. You get one hour. Two hours top. I'm I'm looking after them today Artemis grumbled as Kagaya waved her off. Whatever she said as she smiled at the twins. Do you want to see what grandma got you too? She asked as they giggled and squealed with large smiles. Kagaya giggled at them as she sat them carefully on the floor and brought her hands in front of her. She smiled as she focused her energy and two balls of light formed in her hands. The twins giggled as the orbs of light formed long ears, long hind legs and small arms and the light turned to fur to reveal two small rabbits. These are Yusagi and Machi, they are your little rabbits and will always be yours she said as the small rabbits nuzzled against the small girls making them smile. Now you have to be gentle and hug them softly, Kagaya said in a soft tone as the twin smiled showing they somewhat understood. Another two animals? Don't they have enough animal guardians? Artemis, Artemis asked pointing to Mamoru who laid near the entrance. Yes, but those are my son and his wife's animals, the girls need animals of their own, Kagaya said as she smiled and watched the twins pet the small rabbits. And you chose small rabbits? Artemis asked with a scoff before the bunnies disappeared in quick white blurs and she felt two things hit her in the stomach quite hard, making her fall over. Yusagi and Machi are the fastest beings I could create and they are as strong as the other animals as they are blessed by me, my father and mother Kagaya said as she pet the small rabbits as they hoped around letting the twins follow them. As sad as it is I have to go she said as she stood up making the twins frown until Kagaya picked them up and gave them a kiss on their cheeks. I will visit again soon my sweet grandbabies, don't worry. The twins hugged her tightly until she set them down and Yusagi and Machi gained their attention long enough for her to leave. Artemis frowned as she stared down at the small rabbits with a glare as they stared back up at her with cold red eyes. She broke their stare down with scoff as she picked back up the twins. Come on you two, let's go play with the others she said as the rabbits hoped after her. Naruto, Hera's Temple Naruto stammered aimlessly as his brain essentially turned back on. The shock from Hera kissing him, confessing her love for him and his mind connecting the dots that his wife essentially was okay with this since she had said that Hera needed to tell him something and that she was okay with it. I I I Naruto stuttered as Hera blushed darkly. I I am so sorry for kissing you so suddenly. I should have waited for your response before doing that she said as she tried to turn away to leave but found she couldn't as Naruto was holding onto her wrist. Do you really mean that? You honestly love me even when I am married? He asked as she blushed and nodded. I have honestly tried to push my feelings away ever since they appeared after you saved me from the man she said with a shiver. It tore me apart to feel them as you were married to my sister but I talked with her and she is okay with it. It is all up to you though she said as he nodded. There are weirder relationships compared to having two wives he muttered as Hera chuckled. Hestia said the exact same thing she said as he chuckled as well. Hera, it's not that I do not find you beautiful, as you truly are, but this whole sharing thing would be new to me. Back in my home there were often some men with multiple wives and the Shintos are like that as well but it still feels weird he said as she frowned. I I understand I'm sore dash, she said until she was cut off by his finger on her lips. I didn't say no, just that this would be new territory for me. If you are really okay with this then I think it could work, we just have to go slowly and naturally. No rushing into anything either of us feels uncomfortable with he said as she grew a massive smile and hugged him tightly. It's the same for me. I have only been with one other man and sharing the man I love is very new to me but this can be very nice. And I don't want to do much without being married she said as she looked up at him and kissed him softly with a smile. What about Talia though? Will she be fine with this? She asked nervously as he frowned and rubbed her back. We will have to tell Talia about it later but I think she'll understand, hopefully. Just have to wait a bit before revealing it since we don't entirely know where this will go he said as she nodded and held on to him. 
She was with the man she loved, she honestly couldn't be happier. At least, not until they were officially married and had children of their own. That's it for this reading. Hit like and subscribe for a free ticket pass going to the different worlds of anime fanfiction. Looking forward to having you on board again.